You've seen them. You know them. They may be your children. <laughs> they may be your neighbors. They may be you. The kale smoothie drinking, hashtagging, coffee shop, homework doing, yoga pants wearing generation. We call them millennials. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to attract millennials to your Toastmasters Club and how to keep them there after those first couple of speeches. But first, a few facts about this generation. Now, millennials is a label, as is Generation X, Baby Boomers, and so on. And a lot of times we don't really fit the characteristics of our generation label. I'm not a huge fan of the term millennial. I would prefer fabulous 23-year-old <laughs> or old soul young mind. But we don't get to choose our labels necessarily. It's just a nice way to categorize certain trends and certain uh, breakdowns in how society has changed over time. So I'll be using some of those labels for that purpose. It's very hard to peg when a generation begins or ends. A lot of demographic factors go into that. But some estimates put millennials as those born between 1980 and the year 2000, making us roughly 16 to 37 years old. We are also the current largest generation in the United States, outnumbering baby boomers by 11 million people. Now you can imagine the years 16 to 37, regardless of the generation label, there's a lot happening in those years. High school graduation, college or career choices, spouse or partner choices, job changes. We're making a lot of life changes right now. For example, in the last six weeks, I served as the maid of honor in my sister's wedding. I took my very first paid vacation time, and I moved out of my parents' house. And last week a wisdom food <coughs> started coming in, so I expect the blessings of the wisdom gods from now on. <laughs> but these changes are riddled with doubt and anxiety because this generation is the first generation of digital natives. We grew up being watched by our friends and our family online and we share our day-to-day -day moments and our, lifetime, our life uh, milestones with the rest of the world. But we also have dreams. We also have goals. Besides moving out of our parents' basement, we want to make something of ourselves. We want to become someone, to make change. In fact, articles and studies have been done on how some millennials, at least, are willing to give up higher paying jobs in search of more meaningful work, as with any generation. Now, what about millennials and Toastmasters? How does age work in this organization? The 2016 world champion of public speaking, but also second and third place that same year, were all 27 and 28 years old. How does the age breakdown work out across the world? You can see here the darkest burgundy patches have a greater than 50% membership under age 45. Wow. More than half of their members are under 45. Now, of course, 45, that's the millennial generation, but also a good chunk of the next generation older, the Generation X labeled generation. But here, it's the lightest pink, has less than 36% members under that 45 and under category. <coughs> so what can we do as club leaders, as division leaders, as district leaders to keep District 2 from just fading off the Toastmasters map. The concept of social capital has been around for over 100 years, and the term has been around for that long as well. But it recently became popular again to talk about the idea of relationships as a resource. Now, we've, we've seen this forever, right? I mean, you had the bartender, the barber, everyone's uncle who knew everyone could match anybody with anybody else based on what they needed, what they wanted. Now we're seeing a lot of that social capital mediated through online relationships. People collect around common interests, common goals, common ideas, mediated on Yelp reviews, 
Facebook pages, Reddit threads, people who never will meet in the day-to-day -day life. So when your club is found online, because that's where we're going first, what, what do I see? What do I see if I Googled your club? <coughs> do you use the, the free Toast Host site that's available, that's customizable to really have a wow welcome for potential members? Are there pictures of your current membership, current membership, so that if someone sees those photos and walks into your meeting, they've got faces already that they can recognize. But beyond websites, there's so much more out there. There's just a few. Don't try them all. But Facebook is a good gateway drug. So uh, Facebook, <laughs> you can create a free page for your club. You can post long form blog posts, photos with captions, funny pictures, highlight reels of your members, po photos of a member once they've earned a new distinction, highlight it on your Facebook page, show that we're a club that's going somewhere. We've got goals for our members and our members have goals for themselves. Now Facebook is also really useful for your vice president of PR who are the ones stuck uploading all of this on a regular basis. You can schedule posts ahead of time, write four or five in one sitting, schedule it to be spaced out over the next couple of weeks. Done. But beyond Facebook, there's Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Tumblr, Reddit, Snapchat, and on and on the list goes. So the biggest thing to remember with whatever social platform you might consider using to raise visibility for your club or for Toastmasters as a brand in general is speaking the language of the culture you are in. So on Twitter, that might be short, sarcastic, and clever one-liners. On Instagram, it's those day-to-day uber-filtered life pictures. On Pinterest, you can gather collections of ideas and resources in categories for your members to reach out through. This last week, Monday was MLK Day. I looked at a few different club Facebook pages, and I was very surprised how few clubs mentioned that event, let alone that speech that has become a hallmark in American history. And did you know that the most famous words in that famous speech, the words that echo down and continue to echo down through our school system, through education, and through our dreams, those words were ad-libbed. MLK came up with those phrases, those powerful words, because he was feeling the need of the day and the mood of his audience. Your social media platform can do some of that. It feels the needs of the moment and responds to them. It's not a bulletin board for announcements. It's a voice <clears throat> in an ongoing conversation about what your dreams are and how Toastmasters has helped you achieve them. Once millennials walk into your club, once they sign up, think about doing their icebreaker, what happens next? Are you talking about the benefits of Toastmasters? Or are you just explaining the features? So features of Toastmasters is standing up and giving speeches, finishing manuals, learning persuasive speaking techniques, and not throwing up in front of an audience. <laughs> Benefits, though, of Toastmasters is what you've gotten out of it. What you've gotten out of it that you can share with these new people coming in. What can Toastmasters do for their life, for their future? And a lot of times, especially us young ones that are just out of college and still trying to figure out what in the world we want to do with our life, we have to be pushed to that goal and to come up with a goal for ourselves to achieve in Toastmasters. So when I first walked into Bellingham Evening Toastmasters, Patrick McGinty was our Vice President of Education. And he talked me into doing the humor speech contest that was coming up a couple of months later in our club. So I did, and I got third place out of three. <laughs> But I had so much fun with that experience, and I learned so much through it, that by the time the evaluation contest rolled around the next year, I did it. And I won. 
and I went to the area level, and I won. And I went to the division level, and then I lost. <laughs> but by then, I already had some more goals in mind. I was vice president of membership for that term in my club, and I was steamrolling my way through those last five or six speeches to finish my ACB before June, having been a Toastmaster for one year. Sometimes your members need that strong direction, that strong push to get them onto a track of realizing where in the world they even want to go with this. And that's where goals come in. We've heard a lot about goals already this morning, and I don't want to rehash some of the amazing things that Lance talked about today, about pushing your members, making a cultural requirement, not a hard and fast rule, but a cultural requirement that this is what we do here. We achieve, we do milestones, and then we celebrate them. I was talking with some young people recently, some friends of mine, accomplished speakers. They did debate through four years of high school. They went on to national championships in debate. They were asking me about, they were, well, at least one of them was considering maybe joining Toastmasters after he graduates from Western this year. <coughs> and then he said, but I don't know if I can because his Toastmasters too nice. <laughs> his Toastmasters too easy. Is there coaching <coughs> or just evaluating? And that got me thinking. I was wondering, is my Toastmasters club just a sandwich shop? Or is it a gym membership? <coughs> sandwich, the sandwich evaluation method, kind, <coughs> firming words, some little bits of criticism here and there, something for them to work on, and then something to make them feel better after that. <laughs> That's how it works here. <laughs> or, beyond that, there's the weightlifting model. Are your members being pushed to reach a max? And then once they reach that max, to lift even higher and reach another max. When I'm being evaluated, I don't just need someone telling me a few things that I did well, maybe one thing I can improve on. That's helpful, very helpful for beginners when someone's first coming in. But if you've got someone who's already a fairly competent speaker, they can get up there and not completely freak out, they're already not using notes, they need something tough. They need someone yelling in their face and saying, you need to be finishing this manual by the end of such and such a time because you can do it. They need someone who can spot them when they're weak and when they're failing, but someone who's gonna show them then how to cross train those same speaking muscles so they can go on and do that lift again in their next speech. I used to see Toastmasters as something like this. Before the speech, we work on it by ourselves. We prepare it, maybe practice it. If we're brave, we practice it to our roommates. And then we never do that again. <laughs> we go to the meeting and we get five to seven, six to eight minutes of speaking practice. Knees knocking, heart beating speaking practice. We sit down and someone who's listened to our speech once gives us a two to three minute evaluation and then it goes on in a circle. But what if you're using the online tools in the virtual world that are available to you and your members. There is a social media platform, among many others, that is very well suited to club growth, to member growth, and that is YouTube. No surprise there. Do you film your speeches? At the, at the Mellingham uh, Melee last week, I was shocked how few clubs present regularly filmed their speeches. A few hands went up. Some of them were from my club, so I didn't really count. A few of the other clubs, very, very few were raising their hands. If you are uploading your videos to YouTube, making playlists for each one of your members, they can see a progression in their speaking skills. Or they can see habits that are forming that need to be nipped in the bud. They've lived that speech once already. 